Hey guys, I'm going to be painting on glass today. I actually saw a couple people doing anime glass painting, where they basically paint an anime character on glass, which I thought was pretty cool. I do really like anime, it's just not really my drawing style. So instead I figured I'd do some glass paintings of two big hairy beasts today. <coughs> so instead of glass, I'm using clear acrylic sheets. Come in. They look pretty much the same except for that acrylic is a little more flexible. It won't break as easily as glass. Like if I dropped the acrylic on the floor, it wouldn't shatter like glass would shatter, which is nice for clumsy people like myself. It did come with this little cover on the glass, so I just peeled that off. I noticed there was a bit of a glare, so I had to mess with the lighting. I just kind of moved the lighting around a bit while trying to get a better angle. A couple people have actually mentioned that I need to get better lighting, and I 100% agree. I know it's something I need to work on. It's just that, you know, the treasury can't bear such an expense at this time. But I think soon, relatively Hello. soon, I'll be able to improve on that, so just bear with me a little longer. I'll be doing two glass paintings today. I started off my first one by doing a rough sketch of what I wanted. I didn't have paper big enough for the glass, so I had to improvise. I taped two pieces of paper together that ended up being roughly the size of the glass. So my first hairy beast is a caveman with some... Um, very appealing features. <laughs> a big nose and a beautiful unibrow. He's carrying around a giant wooden club, as cavemen do. He looks kinda like a dimwit. <laughs> he has a very derpy smile. But no worries, obviously his beauty more than makes up for his brains. I also made a little fire and I drew a cute little baby triceratops. The nurse takes the cow. The nurse takes the cow. Who's looking a little terrified at this point because it's being dragged over to the fire? The caveman has these skinny noodle arms, which actually are deceiving because clearly he's been Bruh. working out. Or at least he's strong enough to hold that club and drag a baby triceratops. More than I can say about most fitness enthusiasts these days. Must be that paleo diet he's on. I added some flies around the caveman for some added flair. There's also some pterodactyls flying around in the background. You might think those V-shapes in the air are birds, but no. They're supposed to be pterodactyls. There were obviously no birds in the dinosaur days. And this is the point I realized that there were also no cavemen in the age of dinosaurs, but hey, it's too late now, I'm not starting over. So we're just all gonna have to deal with it. I also drew some mountain volcano things in the background. I wanted it to look like a very prehistoric landscape. Obviously you wouldn't see a caveman in a city or anything like that. I then felt he needed something on top of his head, so I gave him a little man bun that's held in place with a bone. This whole sketch actually kind of reminds me of my girlfriend. Like the way it looks. Not entirely because of the hairiness, more the fact that the caveman kinda looks like a potato. And there's nothing she loves more than potatoes. It's her legit favorite thing in life. The one and only potato actually invited me to a potato club, so thank you for that. My girlfriend will be so happy and maybe even slightly jealous that I scored an invite. If you're new here and you've ever seen a potato, that's everybody. You should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell icon thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. Now that I finally got all the sketching out of the way, I was finally ready to start painting on the glass itself. This part wasn't entirely smooth sailing. I put the paper under the glass and taped it down around the edges to hold it in place. I then wiped down the glass before I got started. To paint on the glass, I chose my weapon of choice. Posca pens. I colored the caveman's hairy potato-shaped body brown and added in some dark brown shadows. His nose is gonna be a skin color, and same goes for his arms and legs. His legs kinda look like chicken feet. I don't know what I was thinking with that. I guess he's still evolving. Just give him some time. After that, I painted his man bun and the big club he's holding brown as well. The man bun is my personal favorite part of this. It's held together by a little bone accessory and I feel it just makes the caveman look a hundred times cooler, if I do say so myself. I would have liked to color the hair and the club a different shade of brown compared to his body, but I didn't have too many color options. The annoying thing about Posca's is the limited color palette, one of their few weaknesses, honestly. But that's alright. I still love my Posca's. 
I colored the whole sky a light blue, which took longer than you'd think. Painting the sky with a paintbrush probably would have been faster, but I was already working with Posca pens, so I just stuck with them. I then painted the ground and the mountains. I wanted them to look sandy, kind of like a rocky desert type vibe. I had drawn this little fire in one of my Create This Book 2 episodes. A lot of you really seem to take a liking to him, so he's making an appearance today, and he's looking a little excited, most likely because he's about to have dinosaur for lunch. <laughs> and then I painted his lunch, the baby triceratops that's going to be roasted over the fire. I made it green and gave it an orange belly and orange accents. I then went in with white for the eyes and clouds and toenails and stuff. For the clouds, I also added some gray shadows, wanted to give it some dimension. Afterwards, I went in with black to outline everything and add in some details like shading. I also added in some grass sticking up here and there, just for a little bit of scenery, as well as some palm trees in the distance. From far away, it looks all right, but closer up, the Poscas kind of look scratchy on the glass. It's looking pretty textured, so I went over it with a layer of glossy varnish. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should have used glossy varnish or matte varnish or what. I'm just using what I have on hand. After the varnish dried, I painted over the splotchy spots with more Poscas and did some touch-ups, followed by another layer of varnish. Now this looks okay. It's not bad. It's not perfect. There's still a bit of texture, but it's not bad. I tried filling it in as best as I could. I like the painting itself, I just wasn't happy with the fact that none of the glass was peeking through. On camera, it kinda just looks like I painted on a piece of paper. I feel like parts of the glass showing kinda adds to the beauty of one of these glass paintings. But no worries, because I have another sheet of glass that I'll be painting on, so here's take two. This time though, I drew Bigfoot. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who Bigfoot is, he's basically this giant ape-like creature with huge feet that supposedly inhabits the forests of North America. He He's a folklore kind of thing, kind of like the Loch Ness Monster or the Chupacabra. I basically just sketched him stepping on giant Legos. The concept behind this is that some hunters set up Legos as traps because clearly no other trap works on Bigfoot. I wanted him to look like he's screaming in pure <laughs> agony. He doesn't quite look like he's in pure agony. I wasn't able to completely pull that off, but I'd still say it looks like Please. he's in pain. Just kill me. Can't you see? It's what I want. I've always loved Bigfoot. I've been a huge fan of him for a really long time. Not that I believe he's real or anything, but you never know, he might just be pro at hide and seek. I gave him a little speech bubble saying, Alu? Just the typical Sasquatch noise you hear on shows like Finding Bigfoot. I really like the idea of Bigfoot, he's always fascinated wow. me. It seems I've said Bigfoot one too many times. I apologize for all the headaches I've handed out today. I didn't want my Bigfoot to look exactly like all the other Bigfoots that I've seen, but I still wanted you to be able to tell that it's Bigfoot. So mine looks a little less ape-like than the others. He's got a big nose, pretty large expressive eyes, and skinny little arms and legs. Oh, and he also has a little dump truck in the back. Just wanted you to notice that he hasn't been skipping Brand. on any squats. I started off by peeling the protective cover off the glass and taping the drawing to the back, and then I proceeded to paint everything in. This whole painting on glass thing kinda reminds me of the painting on my mirror video because it's like the same texture and the Posca pens don't go on perfectly. They like to crack a bit, which was an issue I had in that video as well. I colored Bigfoot brown and added dark brown shadows. He actually looks a bit similar to my first glass painting of the caveman. They have a similar color scheme and a kinda similar look. The caveman's just a bit more of a potato, but they're both equally as hairy. I just wanted both of the glass paintings to have some consistency and kind of go together yet still be different from each other. I painted his stomach and his face and hands and feet a skin tone color. His tongue is sticking out, kind of like the caveman's. To be honest, they almost look like they could be cousins. I painted his tongue a light pink and I painted the little sweat drops around him blue. He's obviously having a hard time getting through all these Lego traps. Stepping on Legos is no joke. That stuff hurts. Just kill me. I'm not sure how Bigfoot didn't see all these oversized Legos on the ground, but yeah, clearly the trap was very effective. I painted all the Legos in varying colors just to keep things interesting. I just kinda picked the colors at random, there's no method to my madness. The Legos aren't perfect, it was pretty hard to get small details on the glass, but I tried my best. Here I'm just kind of adding some shading to the Legos with darker colors. After that I went in with black to outline the speech bubble and just about everything else as well. For the speech bubble, I painted on the... 
Uh, uh, I added little bits of grass all over. Didn't want to go overboard with the landscape this time around, though. And now that I've transferred the drawing onto the glass, I peeled off the drawing from the back and went over everything with a layer of glossy varnish. Just like the first time around, I painted over all the splotches and did some touch-ups, followed by another layer of varnish. I think I really like this whole painting on glass thing. I feel like it's just a bit more permanent than drawing on a piece of paper. Definitely feels a lot cooler and would be nice for decor. Click on the top right or bottom left if you don't want me to curse you with double the hairiness of Bigfoot and the caveman combined. Kill me. Go ahead now. The furball look won't suit you.